right? All right. What's up guys, it's Renee from Downtime. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a basic YouTube thumbnail using uh, Adobe Photoshop 2020. So let's get into it. So you click Create New when you first open Photoshop. The thumbnail size is 1920 uh, by 1080. Um, and it should show that the orientation is landscape and you always wanna give your uh, thumbnail a title. You click create, so that opens your, your slate here. First, you um, want to find all your files that you want for your thumbnail. This was a Brendan Fraser uh, thumbnail, so I went in, found a bunch of uh, photos. I like to get the ones that are generally larger files so they're not super fuzzy. Um, you unlock your layer uh, to make sure the background edit editable. Um, so I'm going to create a color background. So first, I do a uh, gradient. And you can choose any color you want. They have a whole bunch. And then you also want to go and click to add another uh, solid color um, that you want to go with your gradient. I went in and I picked a, um, a blue. But you want to put it below the gradient so, so you get the whole effect there. So drag it below. The um, top item on your layers panel is what you see first. Uh, so let's go in and start bringing some of the photos. So the first photo, I'm using the quick selection tool to create this photo into a PNG and have a uh, no background. So you just go and click uh, with your mouse and you can drag around to the subject that you want um, out of the photo. From there, you have to unlock the background layer, select inverse, and then press delete, and that creates the background deselect it, selection tool, and drag it over to your main file. Again, you have to drag your layer to the top so it is a top thing seen. Exit out of that, you don't need that anymore. All right, let's go into our next photo. This was a little small, but I liked it. So I'm gonna go in again and use my quick selection tool. Um, and go ahead, no need to be perfect. If you need to take stuff out, you press uh, option and then you click, it takes away your selection, unlock the layer. Um, I decided I wanted to go in and add that pole there, which made it a little difficult, but again, um, option click to get rid of sections you don't want in the selection. Select inverse, delete, select deselect. So now I went and took my eraser tool to kind of you can tell that some of the edges are a little rough because my quick selection was kind of hard with this photo because it was so small um, and the pixels weren't that great. I'm making a basic thumbnail, so it didn't really need to be perfect because the thumbnail isn't huge. If you're doing a magazine or something like that, you kind of need to be more specific. Um, so I'm just going in um, and you can use your toggle tools on your keyboard to make your... Um, eraser tool bigger or smaller. So all your cursors are around to um, drag and make your photo different. So now I'm using the magic eraser tool as a form of selection. You also can do select color range to, if you have a plain color background, to eliminate your background there. Um, I'm also gonna show you another way, which is magnetic lasso tool, where you click to start and you kind of slowly drag around your, your object you want. Um, and you must connect it at the end, like you see, in order to create the selection. This is just another way you can uh, create a quick selection. Select, inverse, delete, select, deselect. Again, I'm gonna use my eraser tool. Drag that on and you can use your sizing uh, tools there to create it to the size you want. So now I'm just kind of going in, moving things around um, where I want them for the thumbnail, what, make, what looks good or what looks, what looks bad. As long as you're in your selection tool um, on the top left, you can click any photo and move it around. And if you want a certain photo to be um, behind each other, you just have to drag the layer in your layers panel 
behind, uh, underneath the photo you want to be underneath. So now I'm going to text, so you click the text uh, message, and then you start typing your text there. As you can see, I have to drag it to the top so it's above the images. Double click and you can pick your font to whatever theme you want. Um, again, same sizing tools you can use. So I added another text there. Um, so now you can add uh, different strokes. You just double click on the layer and go in and click a stroke. You can size it. You can add, add different colors. Now I'm actually adding a drop shadow. Um, you can change the size. You can change the angle. Kind of just work it the way you want it. All you have to do is click the check mark. And again, to get to this, you just double click on the layer. Next, I clicked on my next text. I wanted to change that. Um, double click on the layer and you can change the strokes. You can change, um, you can add two strokes if you'd like. There's a plus button where you can add another one. Move it around to where you kind of like. So now uh, you can see if you wanted to add um, guides to your, um, to kind of, if you want it to be sized better, you just go to that, show, grid. Next, if you're, this is reset essentials. If your workspace does not look like this, that's where you would go. Now I want to add a stroke outside the image. So I double clicked on the image and I clicked stroke. Same like we did for the text and you can create, change the size. And as you create that, every time you click stroke, it's in the exact same size as the last image you just did. So it all, you don't have to worry about it being different. Same size stroke. Now I'm gonna add in another image. This image is already a PNG, so I can just drag it right in from my desktop. Again, adding a stroke, and now you can use the corner rotation to move it the way you like and size it around. Now you're exporting, you go export as. Um, you always wanna make sure everything's good, 1920 by 1080, make sure it's sized uh, correctly, and just click export. And that is the end. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial on how to make a basic YouTube thumbnail. Just a few takeaways. Um, YouTube does recommend that you do the size 1280 by 720 for your resolution. As I said in the video, I do 1920 by 1080. Either of those works for me. Um, so whichever of those two are your preference. And as well, if you're... Um, Workspace did not look like mine did on Photoshop. An easy way to reset it is you go to Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials. Um, if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All things downtime. See you next time.